In this video, we'll continue our look into the classical harmonic oscillator by looking at its energies. So in the previous video, we discussed our model for the harmonic oscillator. The potential energy function V of x is equal to 1 half kx squared. So it's a parabola whose uh, shape is determined by our spring constant k. Larger k means a tighter parabola. A smaller k means a looser parabola x equals r minus r naught, where we have two atoms and they are bonded together by some covalent bond, and they have some minimum energy bond length r naught, equilibrium bond length. So x represents displacement away from that equilibrium bond length. We saw that in classical mechanics, our particle's trajectory over time, when we started out with an initial velocity of zero, x of t is going to be a, some amplitude, times cosine omega t, where omega, the angular velocity that tells us how fast our particle is going to be moving back and forth inside this parabola, is determined by the spring constant and the mass, omega equals square root of k over m. Okay, so now we want to move on to compute what is the energy of this particle as it's moving back and forth in this potential energy function. So energy, E, is going to equal kinetic energy T plus potential energy V. So kinetic energy is 1 half mass times velocity squared. Potential energy is 1 half kx squared. All right, so velocity, V of T, is the first derivative of position with respect to time, dx of T dt, which is equal to the first the derivative with respect to time of our trajectory function, a cosine omega t. The time derivative of a cosine omega t is minus a omega sine omega t. So we can substitute that in. And the potential energy function, we can substitute in x of t for x here to get what our energy is as a function of time. So we have e equals 1 half m times v squared. So this is our v negative a omega sine omega t squared plus 1 half k x, x of t is a cosine omega t quantity squared. All right, so now we have e equals 1 half m a squared omega squared sine squared omega t plus 1 half k a squared cosine squared omega t. All right, so now we have a, we have a 1 half m a squared omega squared here. We have a 1 half k a squared here. So we want to see if there's a relationship between uh, m a omega and k. All right, so m a squared omega squared. Well, omega is the square root of k over m, so we can substitute in square root of k over m here. Square root of k over m squared is going to give us an m a squared k over m. So the m's cancel here, and what we're left with is just a ka squared. So this m a squared omega squared gets substituted with a ka squared. So we get that the energy is 1 half ka squared sine squared omega t plus 1 half ka squared cosine squared omega t. So we'll factor out this 1 half ka squared everywhere, and we'll have sine squared omega t plus cosine squared omega t. So this is the sine squared of something plus the cosine squared of something. And if you don't remember, we have a trigonometric identity that sine squared plus cosine squared of the same argument is equal to 1. So this whole term in parentheses here ends up just being 1. And our energy as a function of time is equal to 1 half our spring constant times our amplitude squared. So once we decide what our amplitude is, and once we specify what our spring constant is, we have specified all we need to specify the total energy for the rest of time. The particle will just bounce back and forth in this well here as long as it is happy to do so. So this shows us that energy is conserved because it's a constant over time. It's just interconverted between kinetic energy and potential energy. At the outsides, potential energy is high and kinetic energy is low as it slows down and turns around. At the bottom here, potential energy is low, but kinetic energy is high as it's moving fast. So it's interconverting, which we can see by this 
trade-off between sine and cosine between those two energy terms. So that's the energy of our particle in the classical sense. So now we're going to look more into the quantum system and see the, some analogs for the classical behavior that end up showing up in the quantum system.